Well, hello there, you amazing artist. Are you ready to get super creative and create a masterpiece? Today, we are gonna be doing a winter scene with polar bears, but not just any polar bears, oh no. These are pop-up polar bears. They're full of passion and purpose. Yes, and a little pizzazz too, if I, if I might say. Because these polar bears are going to be created by you. I'm going to go through all the materials. And you see this gorgeous, little, gorgeous, colorful background. Well, this landscape background is inspired by the amazing artist, Ted Harrison, which I'm going to tell you about in a little bit, okay? He's an amazing Canadian artist. Now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tell you all the supplies that we're going to need to create your masterpiece. And we're going to put our own spin on it. So maybe you have, I don't know, snowflakes. Oh, I kind of like those. Or maybe you have on your pop-up, you see how it's 3D, right? Maybe you have cotton or fur. Or maybe you want to put lashes on your bear or a bow. I mean, we got to name the polar bear, right? I got a joke for you, though. Hmm. What's a polar bear's favorite meal on a hot day? Hamburger. I know they eat seals, but hamburger. Burr. You get it? They're freezing. They're cold. Okay. All right. One more. One more. One more. Okay. One more. More. Um. When when a polar bear is watching television, how do you stop the? How do you you, you stop it from watching like television? You put it on pause. Yes. So we're gonna create these really cute paws. All right, let's learn about our great artist inspired, highlighted, iconic um, artist, Ted Harrison. And then I'll meet you from up above and we will create a masterpiece. All right, get into peak state. I'm creative, I'm mindful, I'm amazing, I am an artist. Say your affirmations, darling. Yes. All right, see you on the other side. Today, boys and girls, we're going to learn about the wonderful artwork and artist Ted Harrison. Oh my goodness, Ted Harrison's work has inspired the world for over 50 years. He was actually born in England, but later moved to Canada. And he, oh my goodness, at a young, very, like a young age, he loved art, but he was told he was no good. He had no talent for it. He didn't listen to them, thank goodness. He went to art school, got his degree, and after the World War, he became an art teacher and an artist. He's t taught painting um, to thousands and thousands of people all over the world and his work is so inspirational. So let's get ready to be inspired and create our own Ted Harrison landscape. Let's get going. So this is going to be our, um, our polar bear example. These are just some. Of course I want you to put your own finishing touches to it. So what I'm going to use is some, I'm going to use the first thing is some mixed media paper, but if you don't have that, you can even use cardboard or you can use a paper bag or you can use canvas. I mean, just grab whatever you can paint on, right? Now for this particular one, I'm using watercolor, but you can use oil pastels. You can use colored washable markers and kind of bleed them out as long as you have like a watercolor or mixed media paper. And these are just examples. If you wanted to add a little shimmer, I have a little glitter here. I don't know if you guys can tell. I've got a little glitter here. Um, I also have, you can put snowflakes on them and cotton balls. This one I ran over with my chair. It did not make it very well. But as you can see, we can even put lashes or cheek colors. And these I did with washable markers too. And I added a little salt in there as well. So you can add little snow. So I'm gonna show you how to do all of that. But the first thing that we're gonna need are supplies. So again, you don't have to put it in the portrait um, position. You can put it in landscape mode. I'm gonna do mine in portrait method, in the portrait position. And then what we're going to need is we are going to need some black, like a black marker. So you pick which one you want. That's going to do our outlining for us. You can even use a washable one if you have to. Or if you don't have that, you can use a black oil pastel, which is really cool. And I also have a light blue uh, oil pastel and a pink one, just in case I want to put the little rosy cheeks on it. Okay. We're also going to need the glue to um, adhere our pieces together because we were gonna have our head, our midsection, and the back of our, 
a polar bear. We're going to need a, a piece of cardstock. Or if you don't have cardstock, like index cards or um, construction paper or regular paper. So we can cut out our um, body parts. And then we're going to need our boing, 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 our pop-up pieces. So I just grabbed a like a, a, like a, a couple of scraps of a cardboard and we're going to cut these up into pieces glue them together and this is going to act like a little spring for our our um our bear to go boing 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 but you can also go back and forth like we did on the line sculpture to do a zigzag and create a spring like that as well today i'm going to use cardboard just like we also did in the picasso cardboard sculpture piece okay we're also going to need some scissors okay and the, uh, we're gonna need our watercolors. So again, you can use watercolors, you can use washable markers, um, whatever you wanna do. You can even use colored pencils, just use what you have. We're gonna need our brushes and our water jug um, to go ahead and start uh, painting. But let's make our polar bear first, then we'll do our background, and then we'll put it all together. Sound like a plan, man? Let's do this. Okay, here we go. Step one. I'm going to get in my seat here. I'm going to grab my sheets of paper here. And we are going to put our body parts together. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to turn my paper. Let's see this way. Let's see. Make sure you can get in there. Okay? And I'm going to go ahead and start um, mapping out the biggest pieces First. And again, you might want to get a pencil for this so that you can kind of navigate and make sure that you um, make sure that you have enough space for your other pieces. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create kind of like a rainbow. Now you can't see that, right? You can't see that. So I'm going to, Mrs. Talbert's going to go ahead and do a rainbow arch and you see how big that is it's pretty big okay i think my my sharpies are kind of dry so again i'm going to go back over and it doesn't matter because i'm going to cut this out anyway but i'm doing a big rainbow okay then i'm going to come over here and do little uh pause just like that like a little kind of like a bowl or a u shape right and then I'm gonna do the underside of the bear by doing another, it almost looks like a hill, doesn't it? It looks like a, another rainbow arch or a hill. And this almost, if I put a zero here or a O here, would look like a bubble letter A, wouldn't it? So this is going to be the back of my, um, my cute little polar bear. You see that? Right. Awesome. So you can make your paws a little bit bigger. I was a little chintzy with the paws. Now, next to it, I'm going to do the same thing, but a smaller version. And I'm going to come down here. And again, for you, I want you to use your pencil. But for me, I'm going to start with the paws. Okay, here we go. And my inner end. And then I'm going to go back over here and do the swoop diddy whoop diddy. Right? So that's going to be the, the, the front of him. Okay, now I'm going to, I have a lot of space here still, right? So now I'm going to go ahead and create my face. And I want this polar bear to have a nice big face. So I'm going to do not a, necessarily a, a standard circle. I'm going to make it a little bit more wide, a wide circle. So again, we want to sketch that out. Doesn't have to be perfect. Right. And then I'm going to put two little ears, which are, again, little arcs for the ears or rainbows or hills, just little arcs. And then I'm going to even do another little mini arc in there. OK, and now polar bears don't have a round snout. It's more it's long. One time with the Girl Scout troop that we were in, we slept in the San Diego Zoo in the Arctic Oh my gosh, it was like sleeping in a refrigerator. It was the Arctic um, uh, polar bear exhibit and we slept there all night. I have never been that cold in my entire life. Yeah, we actually planned to do that. Anyway, it was a great experience and the polar bears were really cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a polar bear snout and it almost looks like a rounded out 
triangle. Now, that's not in the center, but I'm okay with that. And then I'm going to put my little nose on here. Yay. And I might do this. I might do that again. And then I'm going to draw a line down. Okay. And again, you might want to keep a little white open as a highlight for his nose. And we're going to do a smiley face because I want a happy polar bear. And you can create your eyes any way you want to. I'm just going to do a circle and then make sure I have my little highlights in my eyes. A circle. And I keep a little white open in there for the highlight. Yeah. And then again, you could put cheek cuts on him as well. All right. So now that I have my polar bear, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my oil pastel. Actually, I'm going to take some blue oil, the blue oil pastel. And anytime you put a little blue into white, it makes it look more white. It makes it almost give it like a frozen, um, icy feel to it. So I'm going to use the side of my oil pastel and I'm not going to do it everywhere. I'm just going to do a little bit of, of uh, blue. I'm just going to ice it out a little bit. Just a little on the sides here, okay? So I'm going to come down and use the side of my oil pastel and do just a little shading right in here before I cut it out. I'm going to do the same thing on the back. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. Here we go, before I start adding my little details to it. Okay, I like that. Then what I'm gonna do is I am, if you've ever seen a polar bear, it's it's got a little like a shading to it, right? So I'm gonna use my black and I'm gonna barely touch. I'm gonna just kind of smoke out around the edges. I'm barely touching my paper and I'm using the side of my oil pastel. Check that out, okay? So I'm gonna do that to the ears just a little bit, not a lot, a little hint. Better put on my glasses. Where did my glasses go? Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. This, cause this is gonna take it from a 2D to a 3D, right? We're adding that shadow. Okay, make sure you uh, erase your pencil marks. I didn't do that because I just wanted to get to the, the good stuff. But erase your pencil marks. And then I'll do a little around the snout. Okay, I'm liking it. And then here's where you can decide, hey, do I want to put a little pink? You don't have to, but maybe he has rosy cheeks or she has rosy cheeks. Okay, now I'm gonna take a Q-tip or you can take a paper towel. Q-tip works better, but I don't have one on my desk, so I'm gonna use a little balled up paper towel and I'm gonna do my little smudgy because you don't wanna do this with your fingers because it can be a hot mess, okay? So we're just gonna smudge out all the way around because I'm gonna cut this out, so... I don't care if it goes over this line, but I'm just gonna soften and smudge and blend and smoke out this line here. Check that out. Oh yeah. And then once it gets kind of yucky and disgusting, I'm gonna turn it to another side and I'm gonna hold my paper with one hand and smudgy wudgy. Now, you also, in your art kits, might have a thing called, ooh, it's a fancy thing. It is a little smudging stick. There's a fancy name for it. I forgot the fancy name for it, but on another video, I'll tell you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, again, I'm just smudging out so that it's all blended and cool looking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm digging it. And then I got to do the little cheeks too. Here we go. Come here. 
let's give you a little polar bear makeover. And again, if you don't like it, you can, you know, paint over it. It's all good. Um, yours is hopefully not crooked like mine. I'll show you um, the one, the other ones I did that were not crooked. But I like when things are kind of off. Maybe because I'm just such a quirky person. But anyway, you can add uh, polar bear uh, eyebrows. You can add lashes. Maybe you want to do lashes. I'm going to go ahead and fill in his ears with a little black marker, right? Maybe you put a tongue here or you can even do like these little smileys. You can do all of that, but at least I have my body parts. So let me show you some that I've already done. So I have this one, and this was done with just regular copy paper. And then I have this one, and I really like that one because that one's super, super um, smeared. And guess what I did the blue with? I did the blue here with watercolor. So I did not do the blue with the oil pastel. I did it with watercolor, which makes it look super cool as well. So what did we miss? We missed the little toenails, the little pa the paws. So let's go ahead and we're going to put in the paws of the, the now normally polar bears have like these claws. They like shred to death their, their, um, their meal. So we're going to go ahead and put a line here and a line here just for the paws in the front. And we'll put a line here and a line here for the paws in the back. But you could add claws. Maybe you give the polar bear a manicure. I don't know. Okay. Now. Let's cut out our polar bear. I'm going to grab my scissors. And remember, when we're holding scissors, you put your thumb and it's always pointing up. And you put your other fingers in here. And this is like a little alligator. You've got your guide, the chomper to hold the paper and turn it. And then you've got your chomper right here, right? So what I like to do to make it super easy on myself is I'm going to just cut and take my time. See, I'm holding my paper nice and steady. And I'm just going to cut out all the pieces like this first. And then, oh, I can really kind of just like take my time. And I am cutting on the outside of my black line. And see how I'm cutting a little bit and then getting in there. And I'm, I'm using this hand to turn 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 oh yeah we're getting in there let's get it okay and i might have to if i go over my black line and i cut it away then i i want to definitely add it on uh, uh back which we can totally do so again we've got our cut out um head it's a headless polar bear oh my goodness what are we gonna do Okay, here we go. We're going to go ahead again and we're going to this is this really looks like a bubble letter A to me. So, I'm going to turn and see how I'm holding it and turning. Now, when you're working with oil pastels or chalk pastels or paint, you sometimes get a little messy. So we've got to kind of control the mess if at all possible. And when I do my art lessons, I try to wear clothes that I just only do art in. So that way, if I get paint or oil pastels, it's not a big deal because those are my art clothes. I have paint pants and paint shirts. And I mean, some of you guys wear uh, um, aprons and that's great. But if you're going to be doing art all the time, you absolutely need to have some art clothes. And so maybe somebody in your family has a big, you know, huge t-shirt, an old t-shirt, and that can be your art smock, basically, your old t-shirt. It can be your, and that way you can just be free to just go for it and not have to worry about getting oil pastels or paint on your clothes. Okay. All right. Cool. So we're turning, turning, cutting, cutting, taking our time. And this little alligator scissors are chomping, chomping. And then we're, I'm going to show you how to make it bounce. Have you ever seen a polar bear, um, you know, dance? I'm going to show you how to make this polar bear dance. Because we, we're going to 
have more bounce to this little ounce. Okay, here we go. Boom. Shabloozy. All right, I've got my body parts. I got my polar bear parts. I think this needs a little bit more blue. What do you guys think? Oh yeah, a little blue. Okay, a little smudgy wudgy. Hold on, we gotta smoke it out. Yeah. I'm liking that. And remember, with this blue, you can also do your watercolors, okay? So I'm gonna put all the parts together. He's got his little eyebrows, his little yeah, yeah. You don't have to put eyebrows on yours, okay? You can if you want to. You can put a bow, he can have a sweater. I mean, like we can really just go for it, right? And wherever I uh, lost my black sharp edge, I can just kind of put right on back in, right? I can literally. Also, let's talk about the surfaces that you're using. I'm using my art desk, so it just stays a hot mess with paint on it. But if you're at the kitchen table or you're at the your desk in your room, I want to make sure you always have a plastic um, tablecloth. Always have like a mat, what I call a messy mat or a um, tablecloth so that you don't ruin the furniture when you are creating your masterpiece. Okay? Oh, we could even put, you know what we could do? We could even put nail polish. Why do I want to make this a glam bear? Oh my goodness, I don't know but I could put nail polish and it would just be a fabulous and fierce bear, yeah? Okay, so I'm happy, I'm happy. All right, I've got my paws, I've got my line. I just wanna make sure it's nice and thick. So why do we outline things? Well, for this particular project, I wanna make it pop. Oh yeah, gotta make it pop off the page because it's a 3D bear, right? All right, so speaking of 3D and making it pop, okay, you stay right there. Stay. Um, I am gonna grab my cardboard because this is the magic ingredient to build up the illusion of uh, three dimensions. So I'm gonna take my cardboard and I'm just gonna cut a bunch of pieces. And I mean, I would say they're like an inch by an inch, but uh, it's not technical. I'm eyeballing it. So I'm just cutting a bunch of pieces, depending on how big I want to, um, how much I want it to stand out. And I, I'm going to make a little cardboard sandwich. You see that? And then if I really wanted it to pop, I would do three of them. The other thing you can do is bubble wrap or you can... Um, you do cardstock, and let me just show you that so that you have some options. We need options, options, options. So I can take cardstock, and remember when we were doing the line sculptures, and I showed you how to do the zigzag, which is fold in and then fold back, and then fold in and fold back, and fold in and fold back. And you remember when we had the doing, 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 the little spring? You can do that as well for this if you'd like, okay? So, but I just want to show you options. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my glue, okay, and open it up and a dot'll do ya. Boom. And I'm going to start my sandwich. I'm going to start my cardboard sandwich and I'm going to put one piece on top of the other. And then I'm going to do another dot because I really want it to be high. You could just do two. I did two on a couple of them. Okay. I got a triple triple a triple triple yeah uh, three layers of cardboard okay let's put that to the side shall we okay let's build another sandwich i'm going to take my cardboard and this is going to go in between my body parts and then i'm going to put that one on top of that one and then we put another one on top of this one and oh yeah i'm happy see that's not even like a normal like a normal part and so let's put our polar bear together, shall we, darling? Okay, let me make sure you guys can see. We're about to do polar bear surgery. Here we go. All right. So step one, I'm going to put a little dot here. Okay. 
and I'm gonna take a sandwich and it's still sliding around like the polar bears on ice. And I'm gonna put it on the back of the head. Yay. Don't worry. And I put more. Now you could do this with a glue gun with help and supervision of an adult. Now this is still wet. So I'm gonna take my head and I'm going to attach it to the middle or actually at the top middle of the first body part. And you see how that, you see how it's like 3D? Oh yeah. Now, we're gonna turn that ever so gentle. We have to be gentle. We're doing surgery with the polar bear. So I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna put this on top of, at the top here, on top of my body part. You see that? Okay. Put another piece of glue. We're attaching it. We are building Build-A-Bear. Oh, I love Build-A-Bear. Do you guys love Build-A-Bear? All right, and I'm gonna put this, uh-oh, hold on. I lost the body part. Okay, let's try this again. Boom. Yeah, I'm happy. Okay, so now we're positioning our bear. Yay, and then we're gonna go tap, tap, tap. All right, so now he looks happy. He looks excited. Okay, now he's. we're gonna sit this polar bear to dry somewhere because the glue needs to adhere. But this is the part where you're like, oh, does it need anything? Do I need to slip it and slide this way? Is it centered? Is it happy? Do I wanna make the head go to the side? Like, hey, how you doing? Okay, I like that. I kind of like he's got like a curious look to him. Again, you could have used cardstock to go back and forth. Okay, so let's put that to the side. Now, let's create our tundra. Let's create our landscape, our winter um, landscape. Okay, shall we do it? Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my black oil pastel. And we are going to create a beautiful, sophisticated um, mounds of like uh, just shapes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the swoop diddy. Oh, I said I was gonna do it this way, didn't I? I said, I'm, we're gonna do a swoop diddy whoop diddy for the snowbank that the, um, the polar bear is gonna be on. So this will be halfway. I'm gonna go a little bit down because I want a lot of hills in the background. So I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to go swoop, just like that. Okay. Swoop. Yep. Just like that. Now, now I'm going to create the banks of snow uh, in the back and my mountains and hills. And maybe you even want to add a sun. I don't know. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go meow. There's my first. It's almost like a very just long curved line. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to start small and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to enlarge it. Woo! Just like that. Yep. Now I'm going to create my first mountain. Are you ready? Here's my first mountain. Boom. Boom. Maybe it has a little, ooh, maybe it has a little crookedness to it. I don't know. Just a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a, you could put a sun in the back, but I'm just going to do another mountain. And then another mountain. And there we go. There's my landscape. Okay. So the, the bear is on ice. Yes. Yeah. So again, now you have to ask yourself. And again, on this one, do you see, I, I even put a sun in there. You don't have to, right? It's your landscape. On this one, I have like a little yellow, a little orange. On this one, I have all kind of colors on here too, right? It doesn't have to be, um, you can use any colors that you want as long as they're bright and beautiful. And we can even do like a little mega mix if you want. Okay, so let's wake up the, let's wake up the people. You know who the people are, our fabulous watercolors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my uh, round brush. Let me see here, let me get a good one. 
I want a nice juicy brush. Let me see. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Okay, I got one. I got a nice one. All right, so I'm gonna do the wiggle jiggle in my water. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. It's taking a bath. Let me move this so you can see what I'm doing. And we've got to wake up these colors because they're like, they're little tablets, right? So I'm just going to start dotting and putting in just a little dot of water in all the colors I think I might be playing with today. And I like to play with color, so they're kind of a lot. I'm not going to put dots in my black or my brown. I'm not dealing with them right now. I'm dealing with all my brights, okay? Because you got to light up the polar bear. He lives in a colorful world here now. And again, this is coming from our imagination. So wake up, blue. Shake, shake, shake. Wake up. And between colors, you know you always want to rinse your brushes so that you can try to keep your colors the same. Because we don't want green over in orange, right? You can use the tray to mix your colors on the side if you want to. All right. Let's grab. Now, if you do not, if you do not have watercolors, what else can you use? You can use washable markers, add a little water, zhuzh it up, add some pressure, and booyah, you've got the tundra. Okay, let's do this. So, step one, this is going to stay snowy white. So, I'm going to go ahead and put my first blue. And my first blue, I am using the tippy tippy toes and i'm going to be using wet on to dry right now if i used wet on wet meaning i put water down first and then added my blue do you see what happens yeah and i just kind of zhuzh it around it's more diluted it's more muted which you know what now that i'm looking at it i kind of like that Maybe I'll stick with that. Maybe I'll just do a little wet and a little wet on wet, meaning I'm putting down water. Now, don't do this if you do not have mixed media paper or watercolor paper because you're going to get wrinkles and it's going to get all rippled up and you don't want that. So I've got this kind of little icy situation. Makes me want to put a fish kind of in this little icy situation. Okay, but I'm liking it. And you see, I'm kind of keeping it light down here. And if I wanted to add more, like a darker color, I can just go over it and wait for it to dry and add another little layer. And it would gradually fade into the back. And when I do that, I add value to my piece, right? One of the elements of art. Okay, hey, let's do another color, shall we? You know what I'm feeling? I'm feeling purple. I am feeling purplicious. So again, I'm going to fill in. And again, you might want to mix your purples, right? And then add your water. Zhuzh it around. Let's go ice skating with our paintbrush. Meow. Because I want that nice muted tones. Muted and, and um, soft home. Oh, I'm liking that. Okay. I'm liking that a lot. All right. Anytime what's great too is if you don't like it, the cool thing about watercolor is you can literally just lift it up with a paper towel. If you get it while it's still wet and you don't like it, you're like, mm, I changed my mind. And that is what is great because as artists, we are constantly going, hmm, how can I make it better? What can I do to tweak it? And we're adjusting along the way, which I love. All right, I'm happy. Boom, done. Okay, boom. Wiggle, 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 jiggle, jiggle the color out. Now, I'm gonna add some serious like pops of color. And I'm thinking I'm gonna do some green. Now, again, you wouldn't normally find green in the, in where and polar bears are, but I don't know. With the, uh, what is it called? The ozone melting. They say that if we do not take care of our planet, 
The polar bears are not going to have a home. What are we going to do then? My gosh, we have to save our planet. We have to make choices that are good to Mother Earth, right? So not using plastic and um, making sure that we are recycling and all of those wonderful things that we're going to talk about. Um, upcycling, reusing things, using less energy so that we keep our polar bears here because polar bears are magnificent creatures. Oh, yes, they are. Okay, so I've added my green and I'm color blocking it, right? Meaning I'm putting blocks of color and green and blue, those are analogous colors, which means they sit next to each other on the color wheel, right? So I'm gonna put a little bit more here, a little bit more. All right, okay, but over here, I'm gonna go ahead and put some red. It's kind of like a reddish, um, hmm, a reddish orange. Let's just go for it. Boom, and you see how I'm just taking my time. If it bleeds over, you see that oil pastel, that wax in the oil pastel acts as a barrier so that it doesn't bleed into your other section. That's the cool thing about, um, you know, when you're using a permanent marker like a black Sharpie or you're using an oil pastel or a crayon that's like, it has a wax resist to it when you're using those pastels and it stops the color from bleeding, which is pretty cool. All right. So wiggle, wiggle, jiggle, jiggle, scoochie, woochie. Let's go. Normally when I'm working on my art projects, I just put on music and I just zone out and have fun and let loose. And that's what art should be. Art should just be a way for you to get your creative juices going and to really kind of tap into your imagination and your right brain. And it's a way for you to relax. Now, the only time you're not relaxing is if you're trying to make it perfect. And there is no such thing as perfect. I call my work perfectly imperfect, just like human beings. All right, here we go. Now, wiggle, wiggle, jiggle, jiggle. I think I'm gonna make this one, I don't know. What do you think? Oh, another blue. Let's do a darker blue. Okay, so we've got this bright turquoise blue. And in the back, uh-oh, it's bleeding. Okay. And again, just for the purposes of this video, I want to make sure I'm going quick. Boom. There we go. We got it. Yay. Okay. You can use a Q-tip to clean up the edges if you want to. I had Q-tips somewhere. And again, if you get a little splatter, just kind of do something like that. Now, the next color I'm going to use is a yellow. Oh, let's get some mellow yellow in there. Here we go. And I'm gonna zhuzh it, zhuzh it, zhuzh it, dip it. And I'm gonna add a little bit of orange to it. I want this nice, pretty yellow. Again, yours can be all shades of blue, right? You can do a whole monochromatic. What does that mean? Well, that's a fancy word. Monochromatic means it's different shades of the same color. So all yellow, but more intense yellow, a soft yellow, a lemon yellow, if you would like. And have you heard of ombre, where it fades from the lightest to the dark, darkest value or, or tone of that color? 
That's kind of a cool deal. People are doing that with their hair too. I'm gonna get brave one day and do that and just be like, and freak out my kids. Mom, what'd you do with your hair? Do you like my purple hair? All right, here we go. I'm just adding the little orange to it. And again, you don't have to. There are no have to's. Make it beautiful for yourself. Or maybe you want to give this picture to one of your friends or family for Christmas, for the holidays, and bring a little sunshine. You know, that's what art does. When you share your art, it's so cool because it makes people happy. Yeah? Yeah. I love that. Okay. Okay. Boom. I'm I'm good. And I see that yellow is trying to bleed into my green. Get away. Hey, maybe I would do a polka dot mountain, but not today. So I'm gonna go back over it and erase. Yay. Cool. All right. So we're going to let this dry. If you wanted some specks to your mountains, you could also put that salt. Remember how we did the salt? But I want to keep this kind of nice and flat, right? So I want to just make sure that everything is beautiful. And again, I can come back over there and add more um more color and make it intense right so i'm gonna come back over here add a little bit more blue and you see how i let it dry a little bit first before i did that that way i'm not just swooshing around color it's gonna hold the color onto the paper a little bit better when i let it dry it'll stick to the paper a little bit better Okay, now I want to show you one last trick before we let this dry for a little bit, okay? So I'm going to blend this out, mute it out. Yeah, it's got some little cruddy stuff in it. All right. Now, with this white snow, I don't want to keep it white. I want to dilute that to a really cool blue. So I'm going to put in just a little, just a little, um, a little bit of water or you can mute out your blues. And I'm just gonna add like a really, and I'm gonna just take my blue and water it down on the side, okay? And I'm just going to go ahead and do one of these little situations. I'm gonna add some strokes of blue to make it look a little bit more crisp and icy. Crisp and icy. like little mounds. Little mounds, muted mounds of snow. Little, well, when I used to ski, we would do the snow moguls, Ooh, right? Just a little bit, not everywhere, just a little bit. Okay, and if you're like, oh, I put too much, oh, I don't want that then all you can do is smush, smudge it. You see it? Just use my paper towel and I'm making that nice and soft. Super soft. And that gives it that icy appearance. Okay, so we will go ahead and we're gonna go, we're let that dry and we're letting our snowman dry over here too. I mean, our polar bear. And we'll add him in a minute. I'll go ahead and put some finishing. Okay, so we have our background already. It's almost dry. We have our nice little light coat of a blue, uh, light blue wash to make our snow look a little crisp. And this little fella, I'm thinking his name is Ben. I like Ben. So we're gonna go ahead and glue Ben right down into the snow. So we've got Ben's head put on with our triple cardboard sandwich 
um, on both sides. So it's got that little pop-up um, kind of feel to it. And it looks so cute. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to go ahead and put on my glue on the back. And then I'm going to show you some extra little touches that you can kind of, uh, you can use and individual, individualize for your liking. Okay, so you can add those special touches, your signature touches. So let's go ahead and put him right down. Very carefully, hold down for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And I like the fact that I have his head kind of tilted to the side. Now let's take a look at some of the other ones we did, right? So you can even put like little marks here if you wanted to um, just kind of um, show that maybe there's some fur on here. You can um, do this one. Uh, I did the little marks a little bit more like, you know, stripey. Or you can actually put cotton down like he is, um, you know, having a little wallow in the cotton snow. You could add a little shimmer there as well. Other things that you can do is you can just take a white acrylic paint if you have it, or even, I mean, like a liquid paper or a white gel pen. And you can take the back of your, um, maybe your brush, your paintbrush, just like so. Hold on one second. I just had to put a little paint right here. And all I'm doing is taking the back of my paintbrush and I can just give this a little snow just by dot, dot, dotting. We could also flick snow in with like a toothbrush, but just a, a, a little dot will do it here or there, but not everywhere. If you wanted to do and add that little special touch to your scene here, you can also, again, put you know fur or cotton balls down in the snow you can do glitter and um, you can even accessorize your cute little bear just gonna put some dots and like i said i'm just using the back of my paintbrush just to do some dots here you could use your finger i guess as well but I like that. So it looks like it's snowing on our on our polar bear. I didn't give myself much white paint there. But that looks super cool. Okay. And a few more dots. A few more. You could even paint in some snowflakes. Now, if you wanted to give that a 3D effect, you could take, um, you know, like little pipe cleaners and um, you could do 3D uh, iridescent snowflakes as well. And like I said, you can even put a little glitter on if you want it to, or on just on your bear. I find that you don't wanna do glitter, you know, everywhere. It'll either be in the background or on your bear, but not everywhere. Well, you could, but just uh, have fun with this project, guys. And until the next time, spread the love, spread the light, and have fun. Be creative. Take care.